Let's go ahead and get started. I first want you to make sure that you are on the correct tool settings. So down here where the little gear is, click on the arrow and go to drafting and annotation. Once you've done that, head over to layer properties and we're gonna add in each individual layer of our shed. So in this gray box over here, I want you to right click and go to new layer for each of these things. The first is gonna be the foundation. Okay, then right click, new layer followed by the floor, joists, and the subfloor, studs, then we have our insulation, followed by the sheathing for the wall. All right, sheathing dash wall. And you can, of course, expand this side here by grabbing it. Followed by the vapor barrier. Followed by the finish. Then we have the truss system for the roof. We have the sheathing for the roof, our underlayment, and then our roof finish. Okay, so those are all the individual components. We need to go and give each one a color, and you are free to choose the color that you'd like. I usually recommend distinguishable colors at first, and then you can change it back to regular colors later. So uh, you just need to click on the white box of each one and specify a color. For my foundation, I'll go with a grayish color. Then for floor joists, I'll go with a more natural color. And then subfloor, I will pick a different variant, so on and so forth. So just go around and give each thing its own a unique distinct color. Insulation is typically pink. Okay, the sheathing can be a darkish color as well. The vapor barriers, I usually make blue. And the finish, since it'll be like a brick, can make it red unless you keep it wood, then that's fine as well. Okay, truss. Sheathing. Underlayments are typically darker colors. And then the roof finish, I'm going to make it a, let's do a nice like green. Okay, so you should have all your foundations and all your layers set. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And we're going to start drawing the foundation. For the foundation itself, I'm just going to draw a rectangle, REC, enter. And I'm going to click and hover my mouse to draw the other end of it. Now notice your numbers, mine are about 16 and 8 right now. And if your numbers are too zoomed out, when you click and finally make this finalized, you won't be able to see your rectangle. So the dimensions I'm going to use are 14, tab on the keyboard, then 10, enter. And if you did that correctly, you should have a rectangle on your screen. Okay, now we're going to use this rectangle, but before we do that, we need to copy it a few times. So CO for copy, enter, select the object, enter. And then I'm going to click on a corner. I'm going to drag one, two, three copies for the time being. We can add additional copies later. I'm going to press escape twice. And I'm going to hold down the shift key. And I'm going to hold down the middle scroll wheel. I'm going to roll that. And on this first one, I'm going to extrude it out, EXT, enter. I'm going to click on the Foundation, enter. I'm going to go up a total of four inches. So since I made this 10 feet by 14 feet, I need to convert four inches into feet. And four divided by 12 is roughly 0.33. Enter. So that is my foundation. I'm going to press escape twice. And then I'm going to select the foundation. I'm going to go to my layer options here. Click on it. And I'm going to associate that with the foundation layer. So you might notice the lines change color. That's what we want. I'm going to press escape twice. And on the next one, 
I'm going to build my floor joist system. So I'm going to go and do this with lines. I'm going to press L for line, enter. And on the corner here, I'm going to click and go up. And if your ortho mode isn't on, you'll have free rotation over here. We need to make sure our ortho mode is on. So I'm going to turn that on and I'm going to go up vertically. And I want you to go vertically up a total of half a foot. So six divided by 12 is 0.5, enter. And then I want you to go across a total of two inches since this is a two by six. And we're just going to pretend like it's the absolute two inches. So two divided by 12 is roughly 0.17, enter. Then I'm going to go back down. I'll zoom in some more so you can see that. 0.5, enter. And then I'm going to connect it right there. Okay, and if you had any difficulty doing any of that, make sure your snap settings are on. So click over where this square is, make sure it's lit blue, and go to object snap settings, and make sure these are all turned on. Okay, once we have one in place, we can go ahead and draw the other one on the other side, and that's because we're going to have like a framework of joists here, but we need the frame system first. So L for line, enter. I'm going to draw a line going up this way again, 0.5, click, going this way now, because this is for this side. Okay, a total of 0.17, enter, going down, a total of 0.5, enter, and then I'm going to go back to the original and click it there. So we have our two sides there. I'm going to use the join tool, J, enter, click on one, two, three, four sides, enter. And now it's joined those four objects into one polyline. I'm going to press enter again to reactivate the join tool. Or you could just press J again. I'm going to go one, two, three. And it looks like I'm having a little bit of trouble selecting that fourth line. Not to worry. I'm going to select this object, go over here, and I'm going to allocate it over to my floor joy system. Then if I wanted to, I could press escape, go over here to floor joists and turn them off. And you'll see now I can see this one. So I'm going to join that now. One, two, three, four, enter. And now that's been converted. I'm going to turn on the original. Okay. Now that we have those two made, we're going to extrude them. EXT, enter, click on the first one, enter. And I'm going to go up a total of 10 feet or 10, enter. So it's made that. And then I'm going to press enter again to reactivate my extrude tool. Click on that one, enter, and I'm going to go out a total of 14, enter, like so. Okay, so we have those two side pieces in place. We need to put them on the other side, and we're just going to mirror them over. So go ahead, press M, I for mirror, enter, select the object here, enter. And if your snap settings are on, because you turned them on earlier, when you hover to the midpoint of this wall segment here, it should light up with a triangle. I'm going to click, and I'm going to drag downward. And if you do that, you'll notice it appears on the other side. Click again. It's going to ask you if you want to erase the source object. Click no. Now that's in place. I'm going to repeat the same process for this one. MI, enter. Click on that object, enter. On this wall, I'm going to look for a midpoint. There it is. Click. Go down. Click. Do you want to erase the source object? No. Okay, so that's the framework of our joist system. Now we're going to space our 2x6s 24 inches off center or on center. So we're going to use this one to do that. I'm going to have you use the copy command, CO, enter, select the end one, enter, and then go to the midpoint of that. You'll see the triangle. Click on it, and I want you to move up the part. And I usually zoom out a little bit so I could see this. Just want to move up the part and then specify 24 inches, so it's going to be 2, enter, and I'll put it in place. Then you could go 4, enter, and I'll put the next one in place. 6, 8, enter, 10, enter, 12, enter, okay? And you should see that they're all in place, and I'm going to go ahead and press escape twice. Now let's adjust our joists so they're not actually entering the frame like they are right now. And to do that, all we need to do is essentially select all of our joists, including the outer frame, like so. And we're going to use the move key, so M for move, enter. 
click on the corner here, and I'm going to move it over to the corner there. So all of them on this side have been fixed, but all of them on this side are now problematic. But that's fine. Select one, you're going to notice an arrow pop up. Click it and drag it over to that corner point. And you could do that for each of them, and you could also use the same corner point. So I click it, and then I'm using this one here to snap it into place. So it's actually just looking for the next reasonable translation. And let's see if we can do multiple, but it doesn't look like that's the case. OK, rotate that to the other side. Click this one and move that one into place as well. OK, so now all your joists are in place, and they're all aligned perfectly. I'm going to click, hover over this, select all that, and I'm going to allocate this over to my floor joist system. OK, moving on to the next one. This is going to be our subfloor. Our subfloor is made simply out of plywood. So all we need to do is an extrude, enter, click on it, enter. And we're doing roughly 1 over 12 here. So I just want you to do like 0 0.07, enter. And that there is our subfloor. Select the layer and allocate it over to the subfloor layer. Okay, and press escape twice. Okay, for the next layer, before we get started on it, we're going to need a few more of these. So I'm going to use the copy command to select that, enter, and move two additional copies next to it. Okay, now we could start on this one. So before we put our studs in place, we need to make sure we have our sole plate. Our sole plate's just going to be two by sixes. So I'd like you to use your rectangle tool, REC, enter. And starting at this corner here, we're going to go up. Or for the first number, we're going to go a total of 0.5, tab, and then 10, enter. And it should put it in place like that. If it doesn't, use the move command and move it into place. Then we're going to do the same for the bottom here. I'm going to go ahead and use the REC, enter, click on the corner here. But this time, I'm going to go 14, tab, 0.5, enter. And if you did that correctly, it should move it in place like that. OK, I'm going to copy both of them. So I'm going to use the copy command to copy this one, enter. And I'm going to move it from there over to this corner. And then I'm going to use the copy command, enter, to move this object over to this corner, OK? In keeping up with the spirit of the wood can't overlay itself, I'm going to select this one, and I'm going to grab that edge and move it over there. And then I'm going to rinse and repeat with this side, and then go to the other side and repair that one as well. OK, so we have all that in place. Now we got to put our studs on it. 